Hello friends and fellow artists, Miss Katie here. I brought my baby pet alligator, Daniel, to show you, and he's going to help us learn about lizards a little bit. He is a lizard. Um, he's an alligator, as you can see. He's very small right now, but can grow very large, up to six feet, 12, maybe even 15 feet long. So he's going to um, serve as kind of a model for us when we look at some other lizards as well. And we're gonna do some drawing and then painting. So let's look at the supplies you'll need for this project and then we'll get started. Here are the supplies you will need. Watercolor paper, some scrappy paper for practicing your lizards, Pencil, good eraser, watercolors, water, paper towel, some soft synthetic watercolor brushes, couple sizes would be good. You're also going to need salt for this project. If you have a small salt shaker, I had this little chicken one to use, so um, some way to distribute the salt would be great. Also, if you have a permanent marker for tracing your design, that would be a Sharpie or a Micron. If you don't know if it's permanent, go ahead and test it on a piece of um, watercolor tester paper and then paint over it. If your design or if your line smudges, then it is not a permanent marker and you're painting will be ruined pretty quickly. If you want to line it afterwards with a marker that's not permanent, you could go ahead and do that. Just use pencil for your drawing and don't trace it. All right, let's start practicing our lizard um, drawings. We're gonna be drawing some specific lizards that I will put up references for you. These are lizards that I chose that live in a sandy environment or in a desert type environment. Um, the Gila monster is the one that I was going to do my demonstration for. They are a poisonous lizard, really the one of the few poisonous lizards of the world. So they're kind of cool and they're really big. They're the largest lizard that we have in North America. So they live in the southwest corner of North America and the very top of Mexico. And they're kind of cool. They're colorful. As you can see, they're orange or yellowish and black. And I'm going to let you look at some other cool lizards here too, that you can decide which one you're going to draw. But the basic premise is going to be first drawing um, kind of a roundish, ovally shape for the body. And then I'm kind of go ahead and draw like sort of a top view. And Daniel's gonna help us. As you might have already guessed, Daniel is not real. He is a toy alligator, but he looks kind of real. And I'm going to include a little bit of a head here. And then look at these legs. See how they're kind of attached here. They get, they're not just like little stick legs that come out like this, right? They're going to be in two parts. They come out a little bit here and then out a little bit farther there. So let's look at that better. I'm gonna draw, they're gonna overlap actually the body a little bit and then out. So coming up a little bit and then out like this. Actually, this one's gonna come down. It all could be the view that you draw too. So they're gonna come kind of almost like a V, really, guys. Let's look at this. And then these kind of come the other way. So we're gonna make a couple little Vs here like this. Kind of these like loopy shapes, loopy shapes like so. And you can kind of adjust them as you go. You know, this one seems a little big, so I'm gonna erase it. 
I'm drawing darker than I normally would, but I want you to be able to see this really well. Now, the Gila monster has these like little toes. And if I want to, I can draw them as, let's see, he's got two, three, four, five. Just like us. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we can draw, let's see, his back. Yep, same. Two, three, four, five. I'm going to draw them as little sticks first. And then to make them better, I'm going to kind of take my pencil and kind of draw around them like this. Obviously, it would have been a lot better to draw lightly, but just for my practice one, it will not matter. As you can see, he's kind of coming alive. And then his tail is really broad here. All the lizards are going to look different, but this guy's got a really broad, fat tail. I read that they live 90% or 95% of their lives underground and their habitats are really becoming fewer and fewer because of housing, urban development. So they're becoming more rare. Okay, so check this out. Our alligator has eyes like right on the top of his head, but they're looking out like this. In the picture I'm seeing of the Gila monster, his eyes are more like over here, like this. So make sure you look at these images I'm giving you and figure out where, where to place the eyes, the tail, how long is it, and the feet, legs, okay? So I'm going to Go ahead and put this, probably the same view, onto my watercolor paper very lightly, and then I'll show you what to do next. So I finished my pencil sketch and I'm beginning to trace. I wanted to show you a couple of things about his um, markings that I thought would be helpful. And that is that, well, first of all, I was noticing as I was drawing him, from the references, I have a lot of, I mean, they all look very different. All of these Gila monsters look very different. So you're going to have to kind of just make up his spots, really. Um, another thing ab about his spots, it looks like he has these kind of bands on his tail, which, which are pretty good, easy enough. Um, if you curve these bands like this, it will make his tail look curved, okay? So another thing about these spots is towards the middle, he has these kind of almost bands, but they have like these sort of missing splotches. He's sort of this like desert orange color with these bands. And then there's like these splotches of more of this orange shade. So I guess what I'm getting at is you can't really go wrong with your splotches. Give him some splotches, give him some dark spots. This guy ended up being a little trickier than I imagined. So if you would rather draw maybe a fantasy made up lizard of your own mind that is less patterned, that'd be fine. This, this guy's a little more advanced than I had wanted him to be. Let's just put it that way. But I have no worries that you guys will do something very cool with this. So I'm just kind of finishing up my little drawing here and then we'll get into painting. So we're ready to paint our Gila monster or our lizard, if you're not doing this specific um, lizard. And make sure that your palette lid is nice and clean before you start mixing your colors. I noticed mine is still a little bit dirty, so I'm going to clean it up a bit more. And 
I'm going to show you a couple techniques that I feel like will be useful in this project. The first one is going to be that we're going to paint our lizard one shade in this case, and then when it's dry, we're going to layer over it the darker colors. So this lizard in particular is this beautiful desert orange that I'm going to mix up. And he's not this bright, bright orange that that Prang gives us here. Let's look here. So we're going to make one flat color over here. He's not this bright, bright orange. We're going to tone down our orange just a bit. And how can we tone it down? Well, there's a couple ways we could do that and we can kind of experiment. So still light. I feel like it might have a bit of yellow in it. Now, depending on what picture you're looking at, it could be a tad more of a yellow orange. Nice, pretty light. We might need a little bit more pigment. Pigment is the color we're using. In this case, it's watercolor. That's looking closer. And now if we want to tone it down a little bit, we could add the opposite color of orange, which would be blue, or we could use a little bit of brown. And this will just kind of give it a little bit of an earthier feel. Let's see if that looks good. It looks pretty good. Make sure it's mixed up really well. All right, so I'm gonna take this color and I'm actually gonna paint my entire lizard, save probably his feet, because those I think I'll just do all dark. But I'm gonna go ahead and paint my entire lizard, except his eyes and his feet, this color. Remembering to paint quickly and don't paint over it multiple times once it's your color is set up a bit. And try to paint it in one quick shot. All right, so what do I always tell you guys to do while your paint is drying? That's right, work on another painting. Don't sit around and watch paint dry. Gotta keep moving. So we don't wanna paint our background yet and we certainly don't wanna paint his legs cause it'll just all blur into one, one pile of mud. So work on another painting, work on another drawing and then once this dry is dry, we're gonna, I'm gonna come back and show you guys what to do next. My Gila Monster's all dry now. I can tell he's dry because my paper is no longer shiny. If you're wondering if it's dry, it's better not to touch it because you may get fingerprints on it. And it's better to kind of look at it. If your paper looks very flat, that means it is dry. So now I'm going to mix up a darker color for these remaining areas. And you might be tempted to use black, but let's look at our our reference again. Is that really black? Hmm, maybe not. Maybe it's kind of a dark gray. So there's a couple ways you can make gray. You might be saying, Miss Katie, gray is black and white. I actually have white right here in this kind of palette. But if I use this white, in my watercolor, it's going to cover over the black lines a lot and it's gonna make things look kind of muddy. So I always recommend either making black by taking water and just a touch of black paint, just a touch. And you can make a pretty good dark color that way. Um, make a gray. I'm gonna need mine to be a bit darker. The other way you can make a gray is you can take a couple different colors and mix them together. I think that um, this regular kind of pr primary blue and brown make a really nice gray. I might get a bigger brush to speed things along. So let's try to make a very nice dark color. 
using these two colors. And mix them up and see how it looks. It's looking pretty gray. It looks a little too blue still. I'm gonna put some more brown in it. Looking better. Now I want might want it a little darker. So I can keep going with this method. Or I could just darken it up its head with some black if I wanted a shortcut. I think I'll keep going with this method though. This might work. Now, once you find a good color, you can test it over your swatch here. I think that'll work nicely. So, and I can always darken it up, but it's gonna be harder to make it lighter. Now I have here a nice brush you might be thinking, whoa, that's gonna be way too big to get in some of these very small spots. But look at the very, 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 th very small point on it. I can paint big things and small things with this brush, okay? So if you have a brush that is flat like this, this will not be able to get into these itty bitty teensy weensy areas. So go for a round brush if you have it. And I'm going to kind of look at my reference and figure out where all of his dark parts are. And remember, watercolor dries a little bit lighter than it looks right when you put it down. So keep that in mind with your paint. You wouldn't want to go in with jet, jet black. It might be too dark. And I can also take a little bit of artistic license and kind of Maybe add some extra spots that I might have missed with my marker as I go along. I feel like his eyes are going to be a little darker under here. And I'm going to paint on this a little bit. Now, areas like this, where his, all of his arm is going to be, it's best to start at one end and then work your way all the way to the end. To wherever this ends up being stopping, wherever your color ends up stopping. So if it carries on to, to his body, I'm gonna just carry on with this rather than painting just the arm and then coming back. So like, let me show you right here. So this area in here is going to be dark right here. So I'm gonna just keep carrying on Okay, I'm gonna speed things up here for you guys and keep going. All right, so I wanna point out a couple things. First of all, if you go in and you find a spot that you wanna clean up a little bit and it's not cleaning up, it means you need to use water to clean it up. This is still wet, so please don't use water to scrub this out and dab it quite yet. Wait for this to dry. Second of all, if you see a spot that you want to come back in and add more paint to because you missed it, this is still wet. Don't do it yet. Wait for this to dry. And once it's dry, I'll kind of show you what to do. But if I do this now while it's wet, put more paint on there, it's gonna to add too much water and create what is called a water bloom, okay? So it will be something undesirable more than likely. This has a lot of extra paint here. I can sometimes use a, a brush that's dry. It might be a little bit of a thirsty brush and kind of soak up a little bit of that there. Same with here, this is a little bit wet and that might take a long time to dry. So let's just take a very gentle and thirsty brush and just soak up a teensy weensy bit, not too much. 
This spot's got a little, a little too much. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Couple, couple little spots. Now, if I go like smashing my brush to it, it's gonna create a blank spot. Probably don't want that. So just use a, the very, very tip of a dry, thirsty brush and suck up just a little drink for your brush. And that'll help it dry a little bit faster. All right, let's let let's let's let them dry out and we'll start looking at the background. I am back and my Gila Monster is basically dry. I did go and get some freshy water so that my um, next color mixing session would be very clean. You'll want to replace your water as anytime it gets dirty, pretty dirty, so that you have a nice... Nice clean colors, really, guys. And truthfully, I normally work with two water buckets so that I can wash my brush dirty, dirty, and then wash it clean and then use it. That's really the expert tip, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna mix up enough of a color for my sandy background. I might even use a couple of colors and kind of do a wet on wet thing. So maybe I'll have two spots going here. If you can, I would try to save your colors that you're working with because you never know when you're going to have to go back to them. I know I'm probably going to go back to my orange, so I definitely want to save that and probably my gray as well. So save your colors if you can. And let's look at some nice tones that we could use for sand. They live in the deserts of the southwest. So I might start with some brown, but really I feel like some yellow would be nice in here. Also, we're going to be using a salt technique on this. I might have had too much water in here. And if you get too much water, it's hard to get your, your colors nice and dark. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that out. Don't, you don't want your um, palette to be overflowing with color. Now, if I get my yellow wet, I'll clean or dirty, I will clean that right up, but I'm gonna just go straight into the yellow. As I was saying, we're going to be using salt for a technique, and if you put salt on watercolor, it has a reaction, and it pulls away the color and leaves these little speckles that are going to hopefully make our, our background look like sand. But I will tell you that it does not work very well on extremely diluted colors. So a very, very light yellow, you probably won't have very much of an effect. So you need to have a somewhat pigmented color. So I might use a shade like this, that was yellow and brown. And then I might go for more of a, maybe more of this kind of yellow ochre color. Maybe some orange in there. Again, I feel like I have too much water. I'm gonna take some of that out. So oh, this one's a bit warmer. They're gonna be similar. I was kind of looking for more of a yellow tone. You guys, truthfully, sometimes you just cannot get the colors exactly that you're looking for in the limited palette that you have, but we're gonna just work with what we have here. It'll be lovely. I'm gonna go with a couple shades like that. And have your salt ready because once you start this, you really have to keep going. And you have to put the salt on as this is wet. So it might be a good idea to tape down your painting if you can do that. That way your, your, your edges will not curl up. Okay. 
if you tape it down on all four sides, it gives it a nice um, border. I'm just gonna tape it down on two sides for now. Tape it end to end though, for sure, end to end. I think it's better than just taping corners. It looks nicer. All four sides is probably best though. And I'm gonna just start putting down my sand. Now, before you do this, if you wanna put any small little cactus plants or rocks, this would be a good time to do, draw those in first so you can paint around those. But for now, I'm just gonna go with these two colors and for time's sake, I'm gonna use a bigger brush. You may not have a bigger brush, but if you do, this would be a great time to use it. And I'm going to go ahead and paint between these two colors here and there. I'm using two colors because I'm hoping to give it a little bit of dimension. Now, as this is wet, make sure, really, make sure this is very, very, very wet. And as you're painting this, when you just have some of it painted like so, I want you to take the salt and sprinkle down a somewhat even layer. Not too much, just a little bit. And this brush is almost too big to go around his little fingers, but let's see. If you have way too much salt, your effect will not work very well. Okay, I'm going to point something else out, guys. Go paint this way and that way because let me show you. I'm painting a little bit over here and a little bit over here. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I just paint one direction, start here and just paint around, by the time I get back to here, this is going to be dry. And we know what happens when it's dry and you get wet paint up next to it. So I'm going to paint a little bit over there, a little bit over here. Here and there, here and there. And then salt before it gets dry. So it's kind of a speedy thing. One thing I wanna point out is that once you have the salt put down, do not go back over and paint over it or you will lose the salt effect. So just put the salt down and leave it alone until it's dry. Alrighty guys, my background is pretty dry and when I came back to check on it, I was surprised at what a reaction I had. Sometimes you don't get a huge reaction with the salt, but I thought this turned out pretty nice really. So I could go ahead and scrape off all this salt now if I wanted, but it's not actually a hundred percent dry so I'm gonna wait but what I can do is I can work on my Gila monster a little bit more so I'm gonna brush off this extra salt on him or I could simply blow it off a little extra and then a couple advanced tricks for those of you that would like to take this to the next level I'm going to show you now would be one to shade them okay We've talked about this a lot, right? So you can shade simply with the same color you had before, but I'd like mine to be a, just a hair darker. So I'm going to just keep, just keep darken up a little bit of this, not all of it, just a little bit in case I need that for some reason. And I'm going to just shade probably on one kind of side here. I can also take this time to kind of clean up his, any little spots that seem a little eh, underpainted, if you will, sloppy. This is called glazing when we layer our paint like this. Now, if you'd like to add some of that wonderful scaly texture to your lizard, let's look at how we can do that. Now, you could certainly come in with a paintbrush and work 
dot 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 little textures. Let's look at that for a minute. Here's my tester paper. Now for this technique, a very, very, very pointy brush may not be the best in doing this job. It might work okay, but I'm gonna actually use these same swatch marks I had before and find a different color or maybe even the same color. Let's see what happens if I use the same color. And I'm just gonna go dot, 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 dot. All, all, all like so. Now, you could also, if you wanted it to be more subtle, you could just take water. Let's see what happens if I take water. We may need to let it dry and see what happens. But I'm going to put water on this one and then we'll come back and look at it once it's dry and see if this had uh, enough of an effect to make it worth our time. All right, so these are a couple options. We could do some dot dot dotting. We could also try using a marker for this. Now you'll want to make sure that your lizard is completely painted before you use something like a Crayola marker for this because if it's not and you want to go back over and paint it, well, you know what's going to happen. It's going to bleed all over. So let's finish painting our Gila monster. I'm going to just do a little bit of shading, trying not to run into this black that I just painted because I should be waiting for this black to dry, but I'm going to try to be really careful. I'm not using a lot of water. I'm doing it a little bit dry. All right, so adding texture with a marker. Let's see. Going back to my swatches. I feel like this technique will work really good. I'm not 100% sure that yellow is my best option though. I'm thinking about going for a color that is basically the base layer of my lizard here, which is like an orange. I feel like that would be nice. So I'm looking at my pictures a little bit. And this way I have a lot of control. Now you could do this kind of sparingly or you could really cover your whole lizard with it. It would be nice. Depends on really how much you wanna put into this. All right, I'm gonna work on dot, dot, dotting my lizard and giving him some textury, scaly skin. And I'll speed through this and show you guys how it looks in the end. Whoa, guys, that actually was exhausting. My hand hurts from doing so many dots, but hey, I think it was worth it. So, man, if you want to put the work into that, I would say that gives a really nice look. Um, I need to paint his eye still. I think what I'm going to do is use the same kind of orange that I had right here and just put it, just a touch of blue to it and see if I can get the start of a green. I think it's going to need a little bit more yellow, but by using that orange, it's going to be kind of an earthier green. And then also let's go ahead and paint a shadow under him. So I'm going to keep one of these kind of colors here and then add maybe some blue to it 
maybe some more brown to it. Yeah, let's go with something like that. Let's test it. Yeah, I feel like that'll be a nice shadow color. Oh, I forgot to clear my salt. You might want to clear your salt before you do this. We'll see what happens. We'll see how this dries up and I feel like this is about it guys um yeah have fun with your lizard though everybody's is going to be different if you want to do a lizard that is not one of the references I gave you I say go for it hello friends Daniel and I are back and I finished my Gila monster painting it's all dry I waited for it to be completely dry and then I scraped all the salt off so you could use like a um a credit card or a gift card of some type and kind of scrape it off into the trash if you want and then your painting is finished so I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with for your beautiful lizard paintings on a sandy background and I will see you at our next zoom meeting Bye until then.